So thank you so much for having me. Um, my name is Hans Meller. I am the uh, CEO and co-founder of Menten AI. And really excited to talk to you guys about designing peptide therapeutics on, uh, on a quantum computer, uh, namely D-Wave. So it's going to be a relatively uh, high-level uh, talk, uh, but I'm happy to follow up with any questions uh, afterwards. Uh, and please feel free to, to reach out. All right, so let's start by just thinking about uh, proteins. So what do I mean by proteins? I uh, certainly don't mean the 25 grams of protein in your protein bar or your protein shakes. Uh, what I mean by proteins and protein therapeutics specifically is a chain of amino acids that constitutes every uh, dynamic and molecular uh, function and action that's going on inside our bodies and the bodies of any living being. So in this um, illustration here, uh, we actually see a monoclonal antibody of the kind that our bodies um, naturally develop and evolve in order to, to fight disease, uh, fight pathogens, uh, including COVID-19, for example, which we'll uh, touch on uh, the second half of the, of the talk. So proteins are sort of nature's answer to, to doing chemistry um, at, at, the, at the molecular level. Um, and so in recent years, uh, there's been a growing interest in developing uh, proteins. Uh, so if you look at the drug industry, uh, <coughs> seven or eight uh, of the top 10 best-selling drugs today are in fact proteins, and the number just keeps growing. Um, if you look at the uh, chemical industry, uh, there's huge interest in developing environmentally friendly enzymes to replace toxic me metal catalysts. And so these two markets are growing uh, very rapidly. Uh, and there is more pressure than ever to develop better proteins. Uh, now the challenge is that the space of proteins uh, is uh, astronomical. Uh, in fact, if you look at this illustration here, uh, the black dot in the bottom right corner represents all proteins that uh, nature has managed to explore over uh, 4 billion years of, of life. Uh, and so uh, it is really a very small proportion of the possibilities um, when it comes to proteins. And so how do we explore this space that even nature hasn't had a chance to, to explore? And that is the challenge that we have to be able to do if we want to be, be able to make better therapeutics, better enzymes. And so there are a few techniques that are uh, aimed towards doing this. Uh, directed evolution is a clear example of that when we start with natural proteins and we mutate them, we evolve them uh, in the wet lab in order to uh, adjust them to perform the uh, function that we want. Uh, and that is, works great uh, as long as you have a starting point. Um, the challenge is that for most of the proteins in the space of possibilities, there simply isn't any natural starting point. And so, how do we go about doing that? Um, classical methods can really only explore a small portion of the protein space. And so right now, uh, this is done mainly through uh, high throughput screening uh, in the wet lab, synthesizing thousands, hundreds of thousands of molecules and testing them against the target uh, in, in a <coughs> very uh, sort of trial and error uh, fashion. Uh, this process can take several years, uh, cost several hundreds of millions of dollars, and unfortunately, they have a very, very low success rate. And so, using computational methods, uh, 
we are moving towards being able to actually design uh, the molecules, the protein, the peptides that we need. So computational uh, protein design is not a new field, it's been uh, around for a while, but the tools required to make this a viable, uh, successful uh, technique, technology, is only now coming to fruition. So, um, our work has been aimed at combining uh, two technologies, so namely computational uh, protein design with emerging technologies from machine learning and quantum computing. And today I'll present some of our work uh, uh, extending into the quantum realm, specifically quantum hybrid approaches uh, for designing uh, peptides. So peptides are, you can think of them as small proteins, and they may have very interesting uh, therapeutic uh, use cases. And so the advantage of combining these, these uh, techniques is that it allows us to grow, to, to explore a much larger space uh, that would be possible with traditional methods. Now, the, to pose a problem in a simple way, we can think of it in the following way. If we think of a, of a molecule, uh, a specific protein drug target that, we, that we're after, that we want to be able to target, um, we want to find some property uh, in the protein, in this case, the, the surface, um, Right, so some pocket for perhaps some um, feature where we ideally would like to create a molecule or find a molecule to bind to that spot. So it would then uh, modulate, affect, inhibit, uh, or, or whatever the function it required uh, for that protein. And so <clears throat> the challenge is to create a molecule, a peptide, a small protein, that would fit in this pocket very specifically and as tightly as possible. Um, and so it really requires us to, to be able to move individual atoms uh, to specific positions. And the way we, we pose the problem is as a design problem. So we start with a backbone, with a fixed backbone, um, and then we allow the system to find the best possible combinations of side chains as, so as to fit the, the property, the, the pocket, as tightly as possible. And in order to do this, uh, we need to explore a huge combinatorial space of possibilities. And this is precisely what we have been able to do uh, with quantum approaches, including uh, quantum annealer on D-Wave and their hybrid solver. And so to give you a better sense of what is possible uh, using these kind of uh, design techniques, we can design a variety of peptides or molecules with atomic accuracy. So here are some examples from prior work uh, by some of mentor members and collaborators. Uh, where we can design peptides, uh, cyclic peptides of divergent um, sizes, going from seven residues, uh, 11, 26, uh, to larger things that exhibit a tertiary structure. So in this case, uh, the 60 residue um, uh, molecule. Now the key feature of these molecules is that they are designed from scratch uh, in the novo, as we like to call in the field, and uh, they're made with natural and non-natural amino acids. So we are quite literally expanding uh, the building blocks that nature uh, has uh, been using. And so some of our earlier work um, using the the quantum or quantum solver. Um, we're uh, aimed at really trying to understand whether we can map this problem uh, to the quantum computer, to the quantum realm, 
and then whether we could actually solve this, this problem, design these molecules, real molecules, and take them to the lab. And so here are some examples of our earlier work um, where we were able to, to do that. And most recently, um, we realized that one particular use case for this is developing um, anti antiviral um, binders. So we, we had a, a program where we have been creating peptides to bind to the glycoprotein of, of SARS-CoV-2, the COVID-19 virus. And then we realized that we could actually begin to tackle this problem using D-Ways hybrid solver. And so to give you a sense of what this means, uh, what you see on the screen now is the, the spike protein of the SARS-CoV-2 virus. Uh, and if we are to, to clean this up a little bit, uh, you can see that here in purple would be the ACE2 receptor that it binds to on a human cell. Uh, and that is the mechanism through which uh, the virus infects uh, human cells. Now, as it happens, uh, SARS-CoV-2 comes in two uh, forms, or it has the property of having a closed form and an open form. And this uh, change in structure is required for it to be able to infect cells. Um, it binds to, to the ACE2 receptor in the, in the open conformation. And to give you a more uh, sort of uh, simple example uh, and a reference, uh, if you watch 1980s movies and are familiar with, with this, with this um, so uh, in, in this case it's a worm. Uh, if it has its mouth closed, uh, it can eat you. Uh, but if it manages to open its mouth, it can eat you, right? And so the hope here is that if we can somehow uh, keep its mouth closed, then we would essentially solve the problem. And so that is essentially uh, the strategy that we've taken uh, for COVID-19 for designing this type of uh, antivirals. So our task was then to design an inhibitor uh, peptide that would bind to, to this trimer um, protein and the glycoprotein in such a way that it would uh, bias it to the closed conformation of, of, the, um, of the spike protein. And we here's another uh, side view from it. And you can see uh, that the challenge is to design it in such a way that it would bind as closely as possible and as specifically as possible to, to this target. Uh, using uh, both uh, traditional methods and also hybrid, uh, the D-Ways hybrid solver, we have uh, designed uh, several uh, of this, which we are now in the process of testing. Um, and so one natural question then is, how does it compare, uh, how do we compare the classical to the hybrid uh, quantum approach? And what is uh, striking about this work is that um, we actually are beginning to see uh, s some improvements using this hybrid uh, solver. So on the x-axis here is the energy uh, acquired by the, by the uh, Q-Packer or the hybrid solver. Uh, and on the y-axis is the energy obtained by a traditional classical method. Uh, and we can see that in many of these cases, we actually see an improvement using the hybrid uh, approach. Uh, which is uh, really exciting uh, and promising. So uh, with that, uh, I would like to, to thank my team. Uh, a lot of this work has been uh, developed by uh, uh, a, a really uh, exchange between uh, people on the computational side, people on the wet lab side, and people on the drug discovery side, uh, particularly Vikram uh, and Jack Maguire for leading this work. 
just quickly, shamelessly advertising, uh, we are hiring uh, specifically for machine learning scientists and quantum computing scientists to, to, to join our team. So if you're curious about this space, uh, please don't hesitate to reach out. We'll be more than happy to talk to you. Finally, just thank our partners, thank D-Wave for allowing us to, to, to do this work and work closely with them. Uh, thank all of our investors uh, for their support. Um, and uh, thank you for your time.